How good are you at aviation trivia, specifically classic TV shows and movies? Let's find out on Celebrating Aviation with Mike Michel. Now, we've redone an episode we did about two years ago. We've added new questions, have lots of new photos. And if you've never played before, here's how it works. We give you a statement like this one. Sky King's Cessna Bobcat and 310 that he flew on his TV show were both named the Songbird. You have to tell me if it's true or false. This happens to be true. Both the Cessna Bamboo Bomber and Blue Canoe that Sky King flew were named Songbird. So if you wanna grab a pencil and paper, put on the thinking cap and let's dive in and play aviation trivia, classic TV and movies. Here we go. For the star studded 1963 movie, it's a mad, 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 mad world. Stunt pilot Frank Tallman used the gun sight from an F4U Corsair to fly a twin beach through the center of a giant billboard. Yes, that's absolutely true. In this wacky star-studded comedy, Jim Backus is flying, a, is flying Mickey Rooney and Buddy Hackett in his very posh Twin Beach. And he steps in back to pour himself a drink. Yeah, I know. Leaving non-pilot Hackett at the controls. All hell breaks loose as the plane nearly crashes numerous times and winds up flying through this billboard at 100 miles per hour. The billboard was made of cardboard and balsa wood. And uh, as the airplane blew through it, a lot of the wood uh, particles wound up in the engines and uh, leading edges of the wing. And Tolman said he almost lost the airplane. In the bridges at Toko Ri, William Holden plays a Navy reserve pilot called back to fly carrier jets in the Vietnam War. That's false. Bridges at Toko Ri was filmed aboard the carrier USS Oriskany, and Lieutenant Harry Brubaker was flying Grumman F9F Panthers during the Korean War. The movie also starred Mickey Rooney, Grace Kelly, and Frederick March. The TV show Whirly Birds featured the adventures of two helicopter pilots flying charters in their Bell 47G based at Longwood Field. That's true. Running from 1957 to 1960, Whirly Birds inspired the careers of several generations of helicopter pilots. Starring Kenneth Toby at left as Chuck Martin and Craig Hill as his younger partner, P.T. Moore, this adventure series featured both the bubble cockpit Bell 47G and four seat model 47J Ranger in more than 100 action packed episodes. Helen Carter, who ran the helicopter flight office at Longwood Field, was played by actress Nancy Hale. In the 1955 movie Strategic Air Command, Jimmy Stewart makes a B-36 orientation flight with only one takeoff and one landing. That's true. Here we see Stewart playing Colonel Dutch Holland saying goodbye to his perfect Air Force wife, June Allison, uh, as he's about to fly in the B-36 you see in the background. And yes, they're only gonna make one takeoff and one landing, but the uh, secret is that in between, they're gonna fly to Fairbanks, Alaska and back nonstop. Later in the movie, uh, Holland transitions into the jet powered B-47 and there's some spectacular flying. I can't say enough about this wonderful film uh, and it's available on DVD or on YouTube, but you really, if you're into the strategic air command bombers of the 1950s, this is just a spectacular film. And uh, there's Stuart at the end of the movie, things don't work out quite the way he'd hoped, but uh, it's a really amazing insight into the lives of the uh, courageous airmen and dedicated professionals who made up the Strategic Air Command in the 1950s. 
in the drama The High and the Mighty with John Wayne and Robert Stack. The movie's DC-4 cockpit was 100% accurate. That is false. Consider the first true disaster movie. The High and the Mighty followed the harrowing exploits of a trouble-plagued DC-4 on a Trans-Pacific flight from Honolulu to San Francisco in 1954. Here we see Captain John Sullivan, played by a young Robert Stack on the right, and his co-pilot Dan Roman, played by John Wayne, moments before Roman, the old pelican, slaps some sense into the captain, literally. I believe this is the complete antithesis of what we call today cockpit resource management or CRM. Now take a good look at the control yoke. Here's the actual airplane used in the movie in this stunning Bill Larkin's photo taken at Oakland, California, classic Douglas DC-4. There's the control wheel of a DC-4. The spokes are shaped in the letter Y. Now look at that. Believe it or not, that control wheel is from a Boeing Stratocruiser, or B-50 actually, but it's a Boeing uh, control yoke. Now, if Robert Stack looks familiar to you, it's because he was ironically cast as airline captain Rex Kramer, who's the one talking down Ted Stryker in the spoof airplane. And yes, Lloyd Bridges sure picked the wrong day to quit smoking. Speaking of disaster movies, this was a real classic. Our question is, the Hindenburg deals with the airship's tragic final flight in 1937, but was the Hindenburg the first aircraft to fly scheduled passenger service nonstop across the Atlantic? It sure was. The Hindenburg carried 50 passengers, cruised at 80 miles per hour, and made 22 successful transatlantic crossings in 1936, carrying visitors from the U.S. to the Olympics held in Berlin that year. The giant airship was 800 feet long and made the flight across the Atlantic in only three days, which was half the time by steamship. Here we see an American Airlines DC-3, which provided airline service from points in the U.S. to Lakehurst, New Jersey, to uh, rendezvous with the Zeppelin and uh, carry passengers to the beginning of their transatlantic flight. In the movie, The Right Stuff, the part of Chuck Yeager's best friend, Captain Jack Ridley, was actually played by the drummer in a world famous rock band? That's true. Here we see Ridley on the left, Yeager on the right, played by Sam Shepard, and Jack Ridley was played by LeVon Helm, who was the drummer in the famed rock group, The Band. Also in the movie, The Right Stuff, the astronaut who was always asking his wife, who's the best pilot you ever saw, was John Glenn. That's false. It was Gordo Cooper, played beautifully by real life aviator, Dennis Quaid. Cooper made the final Mercury flight in his Faith 7 capsule in May of 1963. It was the longest space flight to date with 22 orbits taking 34 hours. That's almost a day and a half in space. Cooper was the first person to transmit live TV from space and the last American to fly in space solo. Gordo also made the closest splashdown of any Mercury flight, landing within only four miles of the recovery carrier USS Kearsarge after making a mostly manual re-entry due to system problems with the capsule. It was an impressive mission. In the 1986 movie Top Gun, director Tony Scott wrote a check for $25,000 to the captain of the USS Enterprise to have the ship turn around for the now iconic opening scene at sunset. That's true. Filmed aboard the Enterprise, uh, showing the life of a naval aviator. Uh, it was a tremendous film. And there's the shot. The carrier was turning away from the light. Uh, Scott radioed up to the bridge and said, how much would it cost to turn the carrier back into the sun? And uh, the answer was 25 grand. He wrote a check on the spot. 
uh, the movie was a smash. Uh, Tom Cruise uh, really portrayed the naval aviator's life. It did uh, quite a bit for naval recruitment. And the original movie was released 36 years before the current sequel, Top Gun Maverick, which is a perfect homage to the original, and in my personal opinion, the greatest aviation movie of modern time. The 1956 movie, Toward the Unknown, was filmed on location at Edwards Air Force Base and featured the supersonic Douglas X-3 rocket plane. Well, it's kind of a trick question, it's false, but that's because the X-3 was a jet and barely capable of supersonic speed, although that's a whole nother story. The real star of the show was the rocket powered Bell X-2. And the thing that was amazing uh, about this movie, we've talked about it in a number of other videos, but they used the real airplanes. The X-2 was uh, just hitting its stride in early 1956 when the movie was being filmed. And when you see scenes like this, where uh, Lloyd Nolan as the general and uh, William Holden uh, as the uh, test pilot uh, are flying in the B-50 and the X-2, which you see mated there on the left, you're talking about the real airplanes. And that's real footage, just an amazing film. During his visit to a secret Navy base, it's revealed that Sky King is checked out in every type of aircraft in the Navy inventory. Really? Yes, it's true in that episode. Sky King, which ran from 1951 through 1959, was a staple of Saturday morning kid programs, starring real-life Naval Reserve Officer Kirby Grant as Sky on the left, Gloria Winters as his niece Penny, and Ron Haggerty as her cousin Clipper. In this particular episode, Sky is uh, uh, flying to a naval base, which happens to be Point Magoo, California, Naval Air Station. And he winds up flying an F-9 uh, Cougar, intercepting the Songbird, which has been uh, hijacked by his evil twin. It's an interesting episode. In the movie Spirit of St. Louis, actor Jimmy Stewart was the same age as Charles Lindbergh when he made his historic solo flight from New York to Paris in 1927. That's false. Charles Lindbergh was 27 years old when he made the famed New York to Paris flight in 1927, while Jimmy Stewart was 47 years old when he made the movie 50 years later. It was a part that he lobbied for quite strongly, and a strict diet, plus plenty of makeup, made this all possible. The TV show Steve Canyon, based on the comic strip by Milton Kniff, was about an Air Force Lieutenant Colonel who did fly every type of aircraft in the Air Force inventory. And that's true. There's actor Dean Fredericks um, getting ready to board an F-100 Super Sabre. And he really brought the character to life. It was a great program. Uh, these are just some of the airplanes that uh, Canyon flew in many episodes, uh, including from upper left, the B-52, the Lockheed C-130, uh, lower left, the C-47 Skytrain, and at lower right, his favorite airplane, the F-102 Delta Dagger. As mentioned, it was based on a comic strip. And there's uh, Dean Fredericks. Really looked the part. Uh, the program uh, was on Saturday nights following Perry Como, if you remember who he was. And it was sponsored by Chesterfield Cigarettes. And I only mention this because I thought it was odd that the show was aimed for us 12-year-old kids at the time, sponsored by cigarettes. And they were smoking them in the hangar. Really? In the original 1965 movie, Flight of the Phoenix, a Fairchild C-82 packet crashes in the Sahara Desert, but it's repaired and flown to safety in its original configuration. Well, if you saw the movie, you know that's false. Once again, famed actor Jimmy Stewart convincingly plays a pilot. This time it's C-82 Captain Frank Towns, seen here with Sir Richard Attenborough, just one member of a star-studded ensemble cast. 
with a plot that's way too complicated to explain here, I'll just say that this riveting story of survival after the airplane crashes in the desert sandstorm ends when the C-82's wreckage is rebuilt into an odd but airworthy single-engine flying lifeboat that brings the stranded men back to civilization. It's one heck of a story. And if you need it, we have a tiebreaker. You ready? William Holden was the first supersonic movie star, trading a flight in an F-86 for letting the base commander drive his new Ferrari down the Edwards runway 22 at more than 100 miles per hour. That's true. Here's Holden strapping into the backseat of the TF-86F. And on the right is uh, Brigadier General Stanley Holtner, uh, Air Force Flight Test Center commander. And he got his wish. He got to drive Holden's Ferrari down the runway. Holden got his flight in a supersonic airplane. That sequence, by the way, was used to record the sonic boom that became a pivotal part of the movie when they're in the control tower. Great, great flick. Well, there you have it. A look at uh, classic TV movies, uh, TV shows and movies, I'm sorry. And um, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, we have more trivia contests coming down the road. I would like to dedicate this program to movie pilots Paul Mance and Art Scholl, both of whom lost their lives in the making of Flight of the Phoenix for Mance and Top Gun for Scholl. Thank you for celebrating aviation with Mike Machado. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you haven't subscribed, we'd love to have you on board. Please do hit the like button uh, on the way out. That uh, helps us with YouTube. And as always, until next time, take care.